concentration. It's a little bit dissipated, the concentration today, which means that we might get to an injury. So let's just have a moment just to collect your thoughts. I was nervous about tackling it because it was described to me recently as the nation's favourite book. <laughs> but it's not just that, is it? The, the, the book is a peculiarly internal book. You, you see the whole thing filtered through this distorting lens of one person's slightly alien consciousness. Yep. I mean, one of the nicest things that was said very early on in a review was, we have to remember it's not a novel about disability, it's a novel about difference. What's extraordinary about the book is that everybody feels like it's their story, in a way. It becomes very personal to a lot of people. Because Mark Haddon deliberately didn't explain or describe who Christopher was. But everything is seen through Christopher's eyes. So we feel like we are Christopher. Is this the train to London? Christopher! Caught you just in time! We've got your father at the police station! He's looking for you! I went to a lot of different schools for autistic people and one of the things which, which always stayed with me, which I think one of the teachers told me, which was that it's like the, the water in the bath is always kind of spilling, it's always about to spill in sort of someone like Christopher because the world is so random to him. Hey baby. Christopher lives in a world which is very logical. <laughs> he struggles with understanding people's emotions or their facial expressions or metaphors. In some ways his world is quite straightforward and quite literal, but in other areas of his mind he's an incredibly gifted thinker. People on the autistic spectrum are often told that we don't have um, imagination, but that's not true. Many people on the autistic spectrum are really, really creative. Um, for example, I'm an artist and there's many people who do arts, music, drama. But there's a difference between social imagination, i.e. understanding someone else's intentions, and uh, creative imagination, and sometimes people don't make that distinction. We couldn't really take a shortcut to Asperger's acting. I think Luke had to really find what felt truthful and right somewhere in that spectrum. And everyone made sure that we didn't just play to what we felt was a type. Um, and I think that's, that's, that was crucial. It's extraordinary and dramatic and very, very complicated. And I think it takes the audience completely by surprise. Because the book's so popular, and I think they think, what are they going to do? How are they going to do this? I felt that it would be wonderful to be immersed in it, sitting in the round so that you were breathing the same air as Christopher does, completely inside his head the lack of stage directions or the lack of kind of set suggested in the script means that it's just blown it open. So it would make me laugh in rehearsal some days where I'd see the, the section we were working on. It might be Christopher walks into Paddington Station and, you know, it's a week's work of twists and turns and lifts and things. I've absolutely loved working on it, although it's been really, really heavy because there's so much activity and movement in it, and it's quite technical. Um, so it's been quite exhausting for the old granny of the company. <laughs> a lot of our work happens in the first half of Act Two. There's uh, the equivalent of an, an odyssey. It is like a hero's odyssey. And it is almost Homeric in, in its ambition in lots of ways, but it all happens in 20 minutes. That sounds like a long time, but in lots of ways you've got to be very careful to try and keep pairing it back to just the right amount of time where we see Christopher discovering something, and then as soon as he's, he's got it, we almost nudge him into the next kind of uh, calamity, and the next, and the next, and the next. Haven't you got a no to go to? <laughs> 
I didn't find the, the challenge of dramatising Christopher from an external point of view that daunting. Much more daunting was how the devil do you get from Swindon to Wilsdon? <laughs> <laughs> Where is platform one? Through the underpass, up the stairs, you'll see the signs. The multi-sensory approach of the production means that you can explain to somebody who doesn't know much about autism what being on the autistic spectrum is like. Left, right, left, right. When he's going through Paddington Station, it's very noisy and confusing, and then all of a sudden it goes to slow motion and it speeds up again. People on the autistic spectrum often have slower cognitive processing simply because we're not able to filter out the amount of information that our brains are being given. Christopher's never been outside of his street on his own, ever. So when he actually does go on his journey, everything he encounters is new and frightening and very perplexing. I think this is a metaphor because it's about all of us encountering things that we find overwhelming and confusing and feeling that fear, but driving through anyway.